Hi, this is Kevin from Excel Coaching. In our previous recording on share valuation, we discussed how the time value of money concept can be used to discount future payments, that is dividends, to arrive at a theoretical price of a share. However, many companies which don't pay a dividend, the dividend method of valuation is not adequate. There are other methods to value shares, and one of them is a valuation by multiples. In this recording, we'll explain the process around valuation by multiples. The notion of valuation by multiples is that the company we are valuing is comparable to other companies. For example, we want to value the share of company A and we'll use the financials from company B to do this. When discussing valuation by multiples, it is important to understand there are various multiples which can be used. Examples are EBITDA, P ratio, In this particular recording, we'll focus on PE ratio multiples. So first, let's understand what PE ratio means before we look at its application. PE ratio, or price earnings ratio, is basically share price divided by earnings per share. So share price, you divide that by earnings per share. Okay. Share price is effectively the price of a stock currently being sold or traded for, right? So that's your price you currently can get for a particular stock. And earnings per share is basically how much money each share earns. Okay, both of these measures, so share price or earnings per share, both of these measures, they are readily available for public companies in databases like Yahoo Finance. So Yahoo Finance is a good source for you to get this financial information. Or you can go to the stock exchange uh, website for your particular country. Let's have a look at some extracts from Yahoo Finance. When it comes to PE ratio, Often there'll be two ratios published. One is called the trailing P ratio, okay? And the other one is forward P ratio. The trailing P ratio is basically the earnings for the last 12 months. It is based on the earnings for the last 12 months. And the forward P E ratio is based on expected future earnings. Right, so remember, P ratio is basically the share price divided by earnings. One is forward, so it's looking in the future, and one is looking backwards. The trading one is looking backwards. In this example, we are looking at Facebook. I mean, everyone knows about Facebook as a company, right? So we are going to be looking at Facebook, and we are going to be using Facebook financial to estimate the price of another company. So we'll use the financials from Facebook and estimate the price say, for Google. Okay, so coming back to P ratio for Facebook, there are two ratios. So one, the trailing, which is 31.27, and the forward P ratio is 26.14. So all this data is readily available in Yahoo Finance. So you go to Yahoo Finance, you search, uh, you, you, you search for uh, Facebook, right? And we'll come up with Facebook's financial. So number of tabs there, there's a summary tab, there's a chart tab. So all these uh, data I've just talked about, P ratio, etc. they are in the statistics tab. So the third tab on uh, Yahoo Finance for a particular company is the statistics tab. This is where we are getting these financials from. So, um, like I said, we have got two P ratios here, one the trailing, one the forward looking, all right? We've discussed before that the P 
PE ratio is effectively price. So PE ratio is basically price divided by earnings per share. What we are going to do, we are just going to prove that for Facebook using the data which is readily available. Okay, so on the left hand side of my screen, you have got the P ratio. On the right hand side of my screen, you've got the earnings per share, right? Again, you will see a number of different metrics for the earnings per share because earnings per share are basically the estimates of earnings in the future, right? So you have analysts providing these different forecasts. Okay, not everyone has got the same view of the future. Some of them have got a low estimate. Some of them have got a quite high estimate of Facebook. So they are quite optimistic of Facebook's earnings. And some of them are not that optimistic. So you've got a range of earnings forecasts, right? So this is why there's a range of earnings data. We are going to be focusing our analysis on what we call the average estimate. And the average estimate is basically all the different analyst view. So you take all of our views. Some might say the earnings from Facebook will be 10. Another one might say it's 12. Another one might say it will be 9. So we take all of that. Then we aggregate that and do an average of that. Okay. So in this particular example of Facebook, as you can see, for 2021, which is the last column here, we have got 51 analysts giving their forecast. And you compute all of that, you get an average of that earnings to be 10.5. Okay. So 10.5 is that average. So P ratio, price divided by earnings per share. Price of Facebook, as we can see, $274.50. So that's the price. You divide that by the earnings per share. Earnings per share we've just found, which is 10.5, but average. So price earning ratio, you do the maths, 274, uh, 274.50 divided by $10.50. That gives us 26.14, which is that forward PE ratio, which is listed on Yahoo Finance. What we've just done, we've just proved that PE ratio, which is price divided by earnings per share, it actually works using the data available. Okay, so this is what we have just worked out. So that was just proving the PE ratio for Facebook. What we'll do next, we'll use this data and derive the price for a competitor. Okay, so we are going to use the financials from Facebook and derive that uh, and use that to derive a price for a competitor like Google. Okay, so in the previous slide, we determined that the P ratio for Facebook was 26.14. Right, so this is what we had determined in the previous slide. So going back, 26.14 was the P ratio for Facebook. Okay, so now let's use this financial information about Facebook to arrive at a theoretical price for Google. Facebook and Google could be seen as comparable in the sense that they operate in similar sector or industry. Right, so going back to P ratio, which is price over earnings per share. Right, so now let's use this information. So P ratio 26.14 for Facebook. Price of Google, we want to calculate that. Okay, let's calculate that. And what we know is the earnings per share for Google. So similarly, we go on Yahoo Finance. Google's uh, company is called Alphabet, right? So we go to the analysis tab on Yahoo Finance. It has all the different earnings per share forecasts, right? So the earnings per share for Google, again, the average is 62. So we know that the earnings per share is 62. Right, we know that the price earning ratio for Facebook is 26 because Facebook and Google are comparable companies. We are going to use that relationship 
to calculate the price for Google. Okay, so very simple math. So price for Google would be 26.14 multiplied by 62. That gives us just around $1,600. Okay, so 26.14 multiplied by 62 gives you roughly $1,600. This is what the theoretical price of Google is using the PE ratio for Facebook and using that earnings guidance of Google of 62. Right, so again, we are using the earnings guidance for Google, and we are saying because it has got a very similar risk to Facebook, let's use the Facebook PE ratio, right? So this is how we get the price of 1600. Remember here, we have used the PE ratio for Facebook only. So just one company's PE ratio. Okay, so this is what we did in that previous slide. We used the P ratio for Facebook to derive the theoretical price of Google. To make this a bit more sophisticated, instead of using the PE ratio for one company, we can use few companies to come up with an average for the industry, which is probably a more robust measure. Okay? So who are some of the competitors for Google? Well, there's Facebook, there's Microsoft, there's Apple. So in this particular case, let's just use three companies. You could use four, you could use five, you could use as many as you want, all right? So as long as they are comparable, they have got similar risks, we are in similar industries and that sort of thing, okay? So here, what we'll do, we'll look at the PE ratio, price earning ratio for these three companies. So Facebook, it's 26.14, Microsoft, it's 30.21, and Apple, it's 31.82, all right? So what we'll do is we'll aggregate all these three and work out an average PE ratio for that industry or that group of companies. So that average comes up, so 26.14, plus 30.21 plus 31.82 divided by 3. That gives me an average of 29.39. So this is an average for these selected companies. So going back to the relationship of PE ratio. So we know the PE ratio now is 29. We know the earnings guidance for Google. It's 61.53. So what's the price? The price is the P-E ratio multiplied by the earnings per share. Okay, so if we take 29.39, we multiply that by 61.53, that arrives at $1,800, right? So $1,800 is a theoretical price of Google based on a P ratio, which is using an average of three companies and the earnings per share forecast for Google. Okay, as you can see, all we are using is a forecast earnings of Google and we are saying, what's the relationship of Google's earnings and other companies which work or operate in a similar industry and have got similar risk? Valuation by multiples is a robust methodology to arrive at a share price. However, it does have some limitations. First, given the share price is a reflection of future earnings, it is important we use forward PE ratios and future earnings forecasts, just like we've been doing in the last few slides. So looking at the financial data, in the future, not going backwards. When we look for comparables, two companies might be in the same industry, but do they have similar risk profiles? How about leverage? That is, do these companies have similar debt structure? If not, one can expect the valuation to be different. Last but not least, Earnings by multiples can be a bit more problematic for startups. 
it is a bit more difficult to get the forecast earnings for startups. Therefore, using the methodology of valuation by multiples could be a challenge for startup companies. Nonetheless, this is a method which is widely used in the industry. Look, in this recording, our objective was to explain how you can value a share using the price earnings ratio relationship. I trust you have found it useful. You can use this price earning ratio relationship and calculate the theoretical price of a share. And you can then make your own judgment whether that share is underpriced or overpriced. All you need is access to some of these financial data. And for many of these listed companies, they are all readily available information in sources like the Yahoo Finance or the website of your stock exchange. If you like our recording, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the like button. If there's any topic you would like us to discuss, please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much. Until next time.